90s hand boys. Mm. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Interview with a Vampire, the film my cousins didn't stop talking about when I was a young kid, and now I'm starting to understand a little bit of why. This film was a huge hit sort of underground but a big hit regardless in the 90s and um, there's a certain reason as to why it only contains some of the hottest actors at the time you got young brad pitt you got sexy antonio banderas you got tom cruise who i guess he kind of was a sex symbol at the time i don't know the blonde wig and eyebrows kind of a little weird but this film just oozes that whole vampire sexuality thing that they definitely tried in the latter years in the later 2000s, like with True Blood and whatnot. But this one really had a niche to it. I remember everyone talking about it, and now I've seen it, and I kind of question as to why. I think that the film has some really good qualities. It has some cool ideas on the whole idea of vampires. There's some pretty cool special effects in this film. It's really cool to see a young Brad Pitt in it. But I do find it interesting how this movie essentially has no plot. In terms that it is a literal retelling of a guy turning into a vampire. And then that's kind of it. There are some very cool little short stories here and there. But I find that the film has this tendency to just kind of go off on a tangent for literally the latter half of the film. There's these little moments here and there that are about Louis and trying to fight the whole idea of being a soulless vampire, trying to live off of animals and whatnot, trying to fight the base urge of his existence while dealing with the idea of immortality, but it, it kind of just goes in a circle but the circle is squiggly and goes off like it never finds its end point. The movie just kind of ends. I find it really weird. He's literally just saying, hey, this is what happened. This is now and that's it. It's got a pretty cool cast, as I said before. It's also got Christian Slater in it as the newspaper reporter guy when he was still getting big. It also has Kirsten Dunst and I understand why people thought she was such a huge hit because she's great in this movie. She's honestly the best part about this film. And she's a kid in this movie. And she's contending with Pitt, Cruz, Banderas, all of these big actors. And she's killing it in every scene. And it helps because there's a lot of scenes that are just really silly. A lot of scenes with Tom Cruise just kind of going all woo -woo 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 about. Really, after having watched this film, now I can see how his producer character from Tropic Thunder wasn't that big of a stretch for him. And then when they go to Europe and there's Stephen Ray with Antonio Banderas, all of the vampires out there are just so random. It's so weird. The whole part where he gets put into the coffin and Dunst and them get put into the tunnel. And then he's just immediately taken out of the coffin. Oh, that part is literally the most random bit in the movie because it's all about what I feel is him kind of getting punished for what he did to Lestat. But in the end, Lestat is still alive. But how would they know that Lestat is dead? But then they're wrong because he's not dead. I, I, I don't get it. Uh, that whole Europe part of the film, other than him trying to figure out more about his history, more about Lestat, more about the idea of what a vampire is, it's weird. There's all these little bits that are just kind of teased at in the film. Like, for instance, Tom Cruise's character Lestat is able to read minds. And he points it out to Louis. like, hey, can you read their minds? Like, no. Oh, well, some powers are different. And that's it. That's it. That never comes up again. And that's a lot in this movie. There's a lot of things that just kind of appear and ooh, they're gone. Stan Winston was a special effects artist on this film. And I was like, whoa, what did he do? And there are some pretty cool changes, particularly the end scene with the end of Kirsten Dunst's character. That was a really cool special effect. Some of the vampire stuff is cool. However, there's two parts in the film in terms of special effects or camera trickery that I thought were fantastic. And that's when Lestat is on fire and he's up on the ceiling. He's rolling on the ceiling. That's an amazing body burn. And the second part is when Stephen Ray and Brad Pitt meet in Europe and Stephen all of a sudden just goes up the wall and he goes up like this. And I don't know if they tricked it or if it's a barrel, 
but I thought it was a really flawless camera trick there. I thought that was really good. I do enjoy it as a period piece. Uh, there are some, again, some elements here and there that I do enjoy. And obviously the sexual innuendo and all the, mm, like the hair, I, I thought the hair was hilarious, especially when Antonio Banderas appears. That wig, oh my God. <laughs> I couldn't take it seriously. And maybe that's why I don't enjoy this movie as much as other people do. I couldn't take a lot of it seriously because of how overdramatic it is and how ridiculous some of the parts are. But this is a pretty interesting film for the 90s, I guess. And it does have some positive values to it. I know that it's definitely a lot better than Queen of the Dam from what I heard. I do need to see that one next because apparently that just killed this whole franchise idea like dead, like stone cold dead. In the end, I'm going to give Interview with a Vampire a 4 out of 7. It's not a bad movie. It has some cool acting. It has some cool stuff. It just kind of doesn't have as much of a forward narrative as I would like it to. And I was left wanting more. In the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, We'll see you guys soon.